Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT, and in this video we're going to be talking all about time lapse. I've had a lot of you ask exactly how I did my New York City time lapse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Lightroom files, I'm going to open up my Premiere files and show you exactly how I did it, and give you some tips and tricks for time lapse along the way. So before we get started, I do want to say this video is sponsored by Artlist. It's where I get all my music from now, whether it's for a behind the scenes photo shoot, a time lapse like this one, or any sort of video that just needs to be spiced up with some good royalty free music. And I'm going to show you a couple little tips and tricks with Artlist to add music to your time lapse and make it really simple and easy. So I really enjoyed making this video. I used my Nikon Z6 and I used a Ronin S and I just had an absolute ton of fun learning how those two systems paired together. One of my biggest tips for doing time-lapse is organization. Once you've shot thousands and thousands of photos, you have to organize them. They have to be organized for you to be able to go through and see what shot is what, where does one sequence end and where does the next one begin. So I really went through a lot of time and organized my files very well. So you can see here I have 22 different shots. I did a little bit better organization in Lightroom, but yes, it's going to take you a little bit of time to organize, but you are going to save a whole bunch of time on the end when you're looking for certain files or photos or shots or sequences. You're just going to save a ton of time in the long run if you organize well on the front end. So let's get right into Lightroom. I'll show you guys how I imported. I'll show you guys some of my shots. We're gonna take a look at a couple specific sequences. I don't need to go through all of them because I think once I go through a couple, you guys will kind of understand and get the gist of how I edit my time lapse. So one of the first things you have to do is you have to import your photos into Lightroom. That's super easy going to file import photos and video. And like I said, organizing will make this part super easy. And we're going to do a little bit of organization inside Lightroom as well. And what we're going to use is collections and collection sets. You can see on the left hand side of my screen here, we have what are called collections and collection sets. And this is my collections tab. This is just like files and folders when you're using, you know, finder or your computer files and folders just another way to organize. Think of collections and collection sets. Your collection set is like a giant filing cabinet and your collections are like individual file folders with all your photos tucked in them inside that larger file cabinet. So for example, I created a collection set called New York City Time Lapse 2019 and inside of that collection set are the individual collections one through 22, there are actually 23, I don't know why I named this one 16.5. But anyway, all of these individual sequences are in their own collections. So all I have to do, instead of going through, you can see here thousands and thousands of photos down here on this bottom row. Instead of going through all of those photos, I can organize and see one sequence at a time. You can see here I have, um, 5,100 photos, 5,100 photos from this particular time-lapse video. Now that's a lot of photos to go through and it gets disorganized very quickly. So I highly recommend you create new collections and collection sets. So all you have to do is create a collection set, name it whatever you want to. In this case, I created this collection set called New York City 2019. You create that. And then inside that collection set, you're going to create a collection. Again, this is the folder. So I can call this one random time-lapse sequence. And I want that to be inside 2019 time-lapse. So we click create and you can see down here at the bottom, it creates our random time-lapse sequence little collection again inside of our collection set. I can't emphasize how powerful collections and collection sets are in Lightroom. Super useful, super organized and you're gonna work so much faster and save so much time by using these collections. So let's take a look here. Again, one of my favorite sequences was the New York City Library sequence, and no, I did not see any ghosts while I was there. As some of you may know, this was um, a set for one of the Ghostbuster films. So let's take a look. I'll show you kind of the before and the after, show you some of my settings. So I shot at ISO 100. This was on a 14 millimeter prime lens um, on my Nikon Z6. I had to shoot at F22 to make sure that I saved these highlights in here because 
It was sunset and the sun was very bright on these buildings and I shot at one third of a second for my shutter speed. So if we hit backslash, we can see the before photo, we can see the after photo, and you can see that one third of a second made a nice blur on the individuals that were walking through the frame. If we just kind of frame by frame through a couple of these, Lightroom isn't exactly built like Bridge to view frames that quick, but I'm working on a pretty fast Mac. So you can see I got some nice motion blur with the people, so it's a nice natural motion when I actually edit these together into a video. And as I said before, I turned down my highlights a little bit, turned up my shadows, and I just want a very natural looking image. And you can see here, I have my whole image sequence. This particular shot was 480 frames long, which means at 24 frames per second, that was about 20 seconds, or exactly 20 seconds actually. That's another thing you gotta think of when you're doing time lapse, and that's very important. Think of what your base frame rate is gonna be. I usually like making my time lapses 24 frames per second, which means 240 frames. That would be 10 seconds worth of time lapse. And yes, that does take a while. I recommend bringing something like a phone or a book. Make sure you have something to keep you occupied. You may be sitting at a time lapse location just staring at the back of your camera for maybe 20 minutes, maybe an hour. So just be prepared for that. So now you can kind of see how I edited this library shot. Let's take a look at a couple of my other favorite shots. Now, I really, really love this one. Um, at Radio City, this was 210 frames, so just slightly under 10 seconds. This was about eight and a half or nine seconds. I really, really love this shot. One of my favorite shots, you can see here on the left-hand side, I have the people nice and blurred out walking through this crosswalk. If we go back a few frames, you can see these cars that were zipping by this road. I can't exactly remember what road this is, but obviously it's neon, so I really like it. It's one of the last huge neon signs in New York City. I'll be super upset if they ever replace this with an LED sign. But if we hit backslash again, you can see that I shot so that I preserved the highlights of Radio City and I preserve some of the highlights in these buildings and the street light these uh, spotlights over here and I was able to bring back some of the shadows I didn't you know shoot at five stops underexposed I shot at probably two stops underexposed I was also able to bring my shadows up a little bit and then bring my whole exposure up just a touch add a little bit of contrast with clarity and again I just I love the way this shot looks and in motion it just looks that much better. I think it turned out really cool. And lastly, let's take a look at another. You can see here, this is a 10 second shot because it's 240 frames. And why I like shooting 24 frames per second or making my final sequence 24 frames per second that you're gonna see in a couple minutes in Adobe Premiere. I like doing that because you're getting the most out of the time that you spend. If my base frame rate, let's say was 60 frames per second, and I shot 60 frames worth of time lapse, that's only one second. Whereas if my base frame rate was 30 frames per second and I had 60 frames, that's two seconds worth of time lapse. So you're getting the most bang for your buck and it's the most economical when you're out shooting. You're using the most amount of frames and you can't see 60 frames per second that well. It's just too fast and 24 is so much more cinematic in my opinion, and it looks better to the eye. It feels more natural. So this was a really fun one. This was on Park Street. I'm not sure the exact intersection because I can't see the street signs that well, but I do remember one of these streets was Park Street. And I just really love the way this one turned out. Again, we're gonna hit backslash here so I can show you guys kind of how I edited this photo. I adjusted the white balance. These lines in the road, these white painted lines really helped for adjusting the white balance. And you can see here we added some shadows. I turned up my shadows just a bit, turned up my exposure to plus two, so two stops of exposure. And as I said earlier, I shot this on the Nikon Z6, which does a pretty great job at low light photography and video. And so if I zoom all the way in here, you don't see that much noise. Again, shoot as low of an ISO as possible. I was shooting ISO 100. So I was able to bring back some of those shadows a little bit and I was able to preserve some of those highlights you can see in the traffic streaking across. We have, oh, we got the Empire State Building, the MetLife Building. 
a whole bunch of cool things. And this was right down the street from Grand Central Station, I believe. And this was just a really neat time lapse. Um, spent a lot of time for these 240 frames, which again was 10 seconds of worth of time lapse. Um, and I just really love the way this turned out. So this was Park and East 37th Street, if any of you guys in New York City know where that's at. And lastly, before I go to export these, I always do a little bit of noise reduction and sharpening, especially if I'm shooting at night. You can see my noise reduction was up to 18 for luminance noise, um, up to 25 for color noise, and I sharpened a little bit up to 53, added a little bit of detail, and I'll usually do a little bit of masking as well to really pinpoint the sharpening in the sky exactly where I want it. So we're about to export here, but I want to summarize and say, make sure you're shooting raw so you're getting the most out of your photos, especially if you're shooting in the bright daytime, you can preserve your highlights and your whites. And if you're shooting at night, you can preserve some of your shadow detail and some of the black dark parts of your image. So shooting raw for time lapse is extremely important. Shooting JPEG, I just would have either had underexposed shadows or overexposed light and raw. I could shoot right in the middle and expand on both sides, get some of my highlights and get some of my shadows and really, again, expand that dynamic range of how the image looked. Now, another thing in Lightroom is you wanna make sure you have as much of your color grading done as possible. I really wanna get these photos like 90% where I want them. I want the contrast to look right. I want the highlights, the shadows, the whites, the blacks, the sharpening. And I want most of the work done in Lightroom because I'm going to be exporting JPEG image sequences. So again, I won't have as much room to work with as the raw file. So I want to get, you know, the contrast and everything right where I want it. And then I'll just add some minor color tweaks in Premiere. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to export these image sequences. I like to do them one at a time, just in case there's any sort of error or mix up, or I want to make a change. I don't have to start completely from scratch. So we will go to file export. And remember, very important, keep your files organized. I like to keep the exported file inside of the folder in another subfolder right here and you have that option. And again, I will usually hit sharpen for screen, just add a tiny bit more sharpness. And if I know what my final composition size is going to be in Premiere, let's say I'm doing a 1920 by 1080, I can export for that. Let's say I'm doing a 4K, a 3840 by 2160. I can export for that, you know, 5K, 6K and so on export your photos and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into adobe premiere and we're going to edit these sequences so we have our time lapse here opened up in premiere this is our premiere project file and again i kept everything organized you can see sequences i have all of my sequences organized here inside of another folder called sequences and again everything is corrected about to 90 percent of what i want the final image sequence to look like and then we threw a little adjustment layer, a little vignette, and obviously some widescreen bars to make it super cinematic, obviously, for exporting. So let's take a look in here. I will show you guys how to import an image sequence. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to File, Import. We're gonna go and find our folder, New York City Time Lapse. And again, this is where organization really comes into play. We have this folder called number one. It was my first time-lapse sequence that I shot. And I can just hit that JPEG. Make sure you go to your options and turn on image sequence. What that's gonna do, instead of importing a bunch of JPEG images that you have to lay out, you know, hundreds of images, it's gonna combine them all into a movie file or an image sequence file. And all I have to do is select that first JPEG, hit import. All right, so now that we have our sequence imported, Let's double check and make sure we'll go to properties. We're going to make sure that it's 24 frames per second. So you can see my settings here, JPEG file, 16 megabyte file size, frame rate, 24 frames per second. And this was a 6K export out of Lightroom because my final image sequence, I want it to be 6K. So 24 frames per second, that's perfect. That matches up with my 24 frame per second timeline, but not everyone's premiere automatically imports as 24 frames per second. So in case it doesn't, you can always go right click and go modify interpret footage and make sure that you assume the frame rate of 24 frames per second. Now, if you're importing a lot of footage and you don't wanna do that, 
you know, image sequence by image sequence, we can go up to Premiere Pro, Preferences, go down to Media, and where it says Intermediate Media Time Base, you want that to be 24 frames per second, or whatever frame rate that you want all of your image sequences to be. What that's gonna do is make all of your image sequences 24 frames per second on import. So we're gonna hit OK, that's perfect. So you're gonna go through, you're gonna import all of your sequences. Now you're gonna have a bunch of video clips and now it's just like video editing. You lay everything out on your timeline, you sequence it together the best way you can to tell a story and to keep your audience's attention. But now I think it's time to talk about something very important and that is audio. Audio is extremely important when you're creating your time lapse because you lack audio when you're out shooting because remember you're shooting still frames and unless you're recording audio on an external device, your camera isn't recording audio. So you have to add it back either way in post later. So in Premiere, for example, or Final Cut, whatever your editing software is. So here's a little tip that I learned when I'm editing my audio. I have a pretty rough cut kind of where I want it. I'll export that cut and I will open it up as a QuickTime video. So we have a very rough um, low res export cut. This is just for you to watch. No one else will ever see this, but it doesn't have audio. So if I start playing this, you know, it's very dead. There's no audio. There's nothing to go with it. This is where you're going to start searching for your music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go kind of towards the beginning. I'm going to open up Safari here. And this is a really cool tip for trying to find the right audio to match your video without having to waste a bunch of time downloading. So I am here in Artlist right now, and what I really like about Artlist, there's constantly new stuff, and it's always popping up on my kind of front homepage here. We're gonna go through, and we're just gonna start, you can see here I've listened to a couple of these tracks. Let's start listening to this one from the beginning. Here we go. Now we'll go through to our QuickTime player and start playing our video and just kind of see very generally how it matches up. That sounds kind of cool. I don't mind it. It works well with, you know, the clouds passing over, the people moving, the flashing lights. That worked pretty well. So that title was called Beyond. Um, let's go through, let's listen to a couple other ones. Let's get this track started. I don't think this one really fits. So that's what you'll find is you're going to find some tracks fit, some tracks don't. But if you listen to it natively in the website like Artlist does, and it lets you preview the entire track before you even have to download import, drag it to your timeline, mess with the audio. It's a really quick way to save a lot of time and kind of get that preview and find just the right track very quickly. So let's try this next track. I can tell right now, maybe that one isn't gonna work. And you can tell that as you're listening to your tracks. This one works pretty well, I like this. There are multiple levels, it kind of has that digital sound to it, kind of a high techy sound. Works well with moving sequences. Fast forward our video a little bit. Works well with Times Square, I like this. I like that one. That one was called Magic Pony, a new track on Artlist. This is, again, a great way to save time. All I have to do now is download from Artlist. I can drag and drop that. You can see here at the bottom of my timeline, edit it to fit exactly where I want it. And another great thing about Artlist is a lot of the songs come with a lot of different versions. They have, you know, a 30 second version, a one minute version, and maybe the whole three or four minute version of a song and they're all edited so that you don't have to manually edit them yourselves in Premiere and try and hack away at someone else's work. A lot of artists have done that for you so you can save, again, a lot of time, and time-lapse is a very time-consuming process, so any time that you can ever save in this whole 
pipeline is absolutely awesome. So that's really it for this video. I'm gonna compile everything. I'm gonna add some sound effects because sound effects on top of your music track just make things flow. It really pulls everything together. And again, you wanna amplify your video and add things that are always going to take your video up to that next level. So that is really my behind the scenes process of how I import, how I edit my photos in Lightroom, how I export and then import into Premiere. And after I import into Premiere, remember we're gonna add a little bit of adjustment. You don't wanna do heavy color grading to those JPEG image sequences and break them essentially. I'll add a little bit of a vignette, some maybe widescreen bars, and that's really it. That is my whole process of how I do post-production on time-lapse. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I do wanna say thank you to my sponsor, Artlist, for this video and for all the awesome music that I've been able to use from you guys. Really appreciate it. And it really takes my videos to the next level. And I will have an affiliate link for Artlist down below. And if you use my Run and Gun link, you'll get an extra two months on top of your Artlist subscription. If you have any questions at all about my process, either the shooting, the editing, feel free to ask them down below in the comments. I do plan on doing another behind the scenes of actually shooting time lapse and some run and gun tips and tricks as I shoot. But I think that's it for this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe and be sure to check out Artlist. And until next time, get out and go shoot.